Hello, everybody. We're glad you're here today. Tell the person next to you, you look good today. And I don't lie, so you look good today. It's great to be in the house of the Lord, be able to worship together. And, uh, you know, God is doing a great work in our lives. Miracles are taking place. And, you know, he is alive. He wants us to have a personal relationship with him. And uh, we got a lot of people joining us online today, and we're glad you're here in the house of the Lord, brothers and sisters in the Lord. So let's all stand as we pray together. God, thank you for this beautiful day that we can worship you. We can come together as the body of Christ. We can sing praises to your name. We can open up your word, which is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. God, that you um, may just speak to our hearts right where we're at this morning. Lord, whatever issues that we have, that we would be able to bring them to you. Cast all of our cares upon you because you love us, the scripture says. So, Lord, just uh, fill this place with your presence, the Holy Spirit, in a powerful way today. In Jesus' name we pray, and everyone said... Amen. If you want to stand, you can stand. If you want to sit, you can sit. Let's worship the Lord together.
just as you are to worship. Come, just as you are before your God. to take and all of my hope is fading away when life is a mountain that I cannot climb you carry me Jesus carry me you are strength in my weakness and you are the refuge I see You are everything I need When every moment is more than I can take And all of my strength is slipping away And every breath gets harder to breathe You carry me, Jesus carry me And you are the refuge I see. You are everything in my time of need. You are everything. You are everything I need. Everything. You are everything I everything about you Cause you are strength in my weakness and you are the refuge I seek you are everything in my time of need you are everything you are everything I seek you are everything in my time of need. You are everything, everything I need, everything. You are everything I Better is one day in your courts. Better is 
is one day in your house, better is one day in your course, thousands elsewhere, thousands elsewhere. One thing I ask, and I would see, to see your beauty, to find you in the place your glory dwells. One thing I ask, and I would see, to see Better is one day in your courts, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts, thousands elsewhere. Better is one day in your courts, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts, thousands elsewhere. My heart and flesh cry out for you, the living God. Your spirit's water for my soul. I taste it and I see. Come once again to me. I will draw near to you. I will draw near to you. Better is one day in your courts, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts, thousands elsewhere. Better is one day in your courts, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts, thousands elsewhere. Better is one day, better is one day, better is one day with you. Better is one day, better is one day, better is one day with you. Amen. Lord, we just thank you for a beautiful day, Lord. It's every, every day is a beautiful day when it comes to worshiping you, Father. Chance to opportunity to fellowship with others, Lord. You told us not to forsake the assembling together, but to join together, Lord. And, and we're encouraged by each other. And I, I thank you for everyone that's here today. Pray that you bless this service and that you alone would be glorified. In Jesus' name, we all said, Amen. say hi to some people. Give them a big <laughs> welcome. Hi. hi, how are you, people? Are you people?
Well, we got a busy week, of, like always, here at Calvary Chapel of Mesa. I always encourage you to get the flyers over here on the table, um, to look at the, the, the cal monthly calendar. I think we have, uh, this week we have the Bible study on Tuesday, Wednesday, and a men's Bible study on Thursday. So look at those. I know most of you are aware of those, but get involved, stay involved. It's a great way you stay in fellowship and you don't get tempted in the ways of the world. Amen? Sometimes I tell something funny up here trying to, but I don't have anything. But I was thinking yesterday I went to dinner, and I have a five-year-old, my five-year-old uh, granddaughter, my only granddaughter. I have seven grandsons and one granddaughter. And, and she says, uh, Papa, um, why did the elephant blow his nose? And I go, why did the elephant blow his nose? He says, to get more uh, trunk space. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty funny little joke for that, my little daughter. Five years old. She's, she's a you know, comedian and, and grooming. But we'll have our ushers come forward. We'll give you a chance to minister through your tithes and offerings and just continue to lift those up in prayer. We've got the food bank back here that's nice and stocked, and those, those tithes and offerings help supply that and really bless a lot of people. Jim? Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for just uh, allowing us to be here today. We thank you for GAC for working and yes, doing Lord. those empty works. What a blessing, Lord. I ask that you would bless these tithes and offerings. You would use them to multiply them, God, and above all, Lord, help us to be good stewards of everything you've blessed us with. We love you, Lord, and we praise you. We thank you. Just continue to bless us. Praises rising, eyes are turning to you, and turn to you.
see you, we find strength to face the day. And in your presence, all our fears are washed away. Because when we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away, are washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God who saves us, worthy of all. Amen. We do welcome Jesus here today, that he would speak to every one of our hearts. And uh, you can take out your sermon notes and you can see the title at the top there, Come and Follow Jesus. And that would be our prayer today as the kids go to their classes. Come and follow Jesus. Every one of us here in this room, come and follow Jesus. And uh, if you were here last week, uh, the sermon was about the prodigal son, and a lot of us have prodigal sons and prodigal daughters, and we have family members, we have backslidden friends, and, you know, especially for a dad or a mom, it kind of breaks your heart to see people walk away from the Lord, right? Kind of turn their backs on Jesus, it hurts you. And so this sermon is great for all of us here in this room that, we know people that need to be healed. We know people that need to be set free from their addictions, from their, you know, things that they're holding on to in their lives that are keeping them from fellowship with God. And they're listening to the lies of Satan in the darkness. And so they need to be set free. Everybody knows somebody like that? Yeah. So that was last week's sermon. You can listen to it online. And uh, so there's a verse in the Bible that says this. It's in Mark chapter 10, verse 27. With men it is impossible, but with God what? All things, are possible. all things are possible. You know, according to God's will, all things are possible if we're listening to him, if we're letting him guide us and direct us. And, uh, you know, God says that he wants us to have faith, strong faith in him. And... Uh, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, it says, Faith is the conviction of things uh, not seen and the things hoped for, that we would all have faith in Jesus today. Did every, anybody here check their chair before they sat down today? I didn't see anybody turn it over, right? <laughs> you had faith that that chair was going to hold you up, right? When you go and you turn on your uh your ignition on your car, you have faith that what's going to happen? Your car is going to start. You know, when you go home and you turn on the light switch, you have faith that the light switch is going to turn on the lights, right? Why can't we have faith, strong faith in Jesus? You know, even the disciples were lacking in faith many times. And uh, Jesus kind of rebuked them a few times for that. Uh, look at Luke chapter 15. In Luke chapter 15, if you remember from last week, there were tax collectors, verse 1. Everybody go, boo, tax collectors. And there were sinners. Like all of us, sinners, saved by grace. We're all sinners. Look at the person on your right or your left. They're sinners. So, 
They, we're not perfect. We, if you ever want to go to a perfect church, don't go because you'll just ruin that church, right? We're all sinners saved by grace. So here's Jesus, and he has these tax collectors and these sinners, and they, it says they were coming near him. Actually, in the Greek, it means they were continually coming to hear him, to listen to Jesus. And as a result, you know, Jesus' first year of ministry, there's three years of ministry. The first year of ministry was like a honeymoon period. What happens during the honeymoon period? Everything's great, right? And then you get to know a little bit about that person, you know, and maybe you start to grumble and complain. Well, by the time you got to the third year of Jesus' ministry, the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and complaining, and they were saying, this man receives sinners, and he actually eats with them. He's actually eating with the sinners. Oh, no. And there's tax collectors there, and there's all kinds of people there. And so Jesus told them a parable. What man among you, if he has a hundred sheep and lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the open pasture and go after the one which was lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, and he rejoices, and he comes home. He calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which is lost. And then here's the, really the, what he's trying to get to in verse 7. I tell you that in the same way, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people like the scribes and the Pharisees they thought they were all righteous they thought they were all that who need no repentance they didn't think they needed repentance you know they had fallen short of God's glory and they weren't really in fellowship with him and so this is so important that we understand there was opposition in the third year of Jesus ministry it got so bad that they wanted to kill him and at many times they tried to kill him, but it always says his time was not yet at hand. It wasn't his time yet. And now when we get to this chapter today, chapter 9, you know, his time is starting to come. In just a few short months, he's going to go to the cross to die for our sins. Honeymoon period is over. You know, everywhere Jesus went, the people, the scribes, Pharisees hated this because Jesus was drawing sinners and people that needed to repent and they were listening to his message and you know so they were thinking hey we got to track him down we got to get rid of this guy we're losing our power we're losing our authority over the people and so jesus went about it says healing people setting people free preaching the good news of the kingdom of god the good news of salvation powerful sermons and every time you read God's word, it should come alive to us. It should be a powerful sermon speaking right to our hearts, right? And we should have open ears as to what he's saying to us. And uh, so turn to John chapter 7. John chapter 7. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. And uh, feel free, if, if you don't have Bibles, uh, there's Bibles in the back. Feel free to take one with you. It's yours. John chapter 9, or uh, John chapter 7, verse 40. In verse 38, it says, He who believes in me, as the scripture said, from his innermost being shall flow, what? Rivers of living water. But this he spoke of the Spirit, whom... Those who believed in him were to receive, for the Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Some of the multitude, therefore, when they heard these words, said, Certainly this is the prophet prophesied in Deuteronomy and the Old Testament. Others were saying, This is the Messiah. Still others were saying, Surely the Christ, he's not going to come from Galilee, is he? Where was Jesus born? Bethlehem, right? Not not. Galilee, and so has not the scripture and the Christ 
comes from the offspring of David, verse 42, and from Bethlehem, the village where David was. And so what happened, verse 43, there arose a division in the multitude because of Jesus. And some of them wanted to seize him, but no one laid hands on him. They didn't have power over Jesus. Jesus willingly gave up his life and went to the cross. And so it goes on here. They didn't have power over him. The officers, therefore, came to the chief priests and the Pharisees, and they said to them, Why didn't you bring him? We sent you out to bring Jesus, to seize him. And it says, The officers said, verse 46, Never did a man speak the way this man speaks. You know, the power of Jesus' words, they, they just came alive to him. No one's ever spoken like this. What authority he had. And he showed it by casting out demons, doing miracles, all kinds of things that Jesus did. And his words came true. And so the Pharisees answered, Have you also been led astray? No one of the Pharisees or the rulers believed in him, has he? But this multitude which does not know the law, they don't even know the law, they're a curse, they're sinners, remember? Nicodemus said to him, who actually was one of the leaders of the Pharisees that came to know Jesus, it said, Our law does not judge a man unless it first hears from him and knows what he is doing, does it? And they answered and said to him, You are not also from Galilee, are you? You know, they're, they're criticizing, mocking him. And, and then he, they said, Search and see that no prophet arises out of Galilee. And then everyone went to their own home. So there, there was division. There was unbelief between those that had hard hearts and didn't want to have anything to do with Jesus and those that accepted him as their Lord and Savior. Kind of like what's in our society today. You know, people love the darkness rather than the light. Even, it says, many of his disciples turned away from him and deserted him because of his hard words. I mean, he didn't hold anything back, you know. And uh, in Luke chapter 9, go over to Luke chapter 9. Remember, Luke is a doctor. I mean, God accepts all kinds of people. He was a doctor. Um, Matthew, what was his occupation? Tax collector. Tax collector. And uh, there were fishermen. There were all kinds of different people. Luke chapter 9, verse 21. Jesus uh, warned them and instructed them not to tell this to anyone, saying, The Son of Man must suffer many things, according to the prophecies in the book of Isaiah and the book of Jeremiah and all these different places. The, the prophetic word was that the Messiah was going to come. We just sang that song, Hosanna. What does Hosanna mean? Come and save us now. So right as... Uh, Jesus was coming into Jerusalem on the donkey. They're crying out, Hosanna, Hosanna, save us now. But what did they want to be saved from? The Romans. The Roman government was, was totalitarian. I mean, they, they could cause you to do all kinds of things, and they could kill you. And, you know, there was no real court of law. I mean, they hated the Romans. Save us from the Romans. That's what they thought Jesus' mission was. But his mission was to go to the cross. It was always to go to the cross. And many times in Scripture, he talks about his mission, even here in uh, Luke chapter 9. And so he said in verse 22, He must suffer many things, be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed and raised up on the third day. That's what was going to happen. And that's exactly what happened, right? Verse 23, and he was saying to them all, if anyone, this is for us, if anyone wishes to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and do what? Follow me. And we're going to look at three men a little bit later that... Jesus said the same thing to 
and they were from all different walks of life. He says, come and follow me. That's what Jesus wants us to do. He wants us to come and follow him. And that's exactly what he says here. You know, take up your cross daily and follow me. Verse 24, for whoever wishes to save his life, if that's your priority, you know, all, getting all the money in the world, winning the mega lotto, all that stuff, if that's your priority, you're going to lose your life. But whoever loses his life for my sake, he is the one who will save it. For what is a man profited if he gains the whole world and loses or forfeits himself? What have you gained? And then he goes on, for whoever is ashamed of me, verse 26, and my words of him will the Son of Man be ashamed of when he comes in his glory and the glory of his Father and the holy angels. I tell you truly, there are some here standing who shall not taste death until after they have seen the kingdom of God. And, you know, so, I mean, Jesus is telling them ahead of time that he's going to Jerusalem and he's going to die. And one of the other things that happened in uh, Luke chapter 9 <clears throat> is that Jesus feeds over 5,000 people. <clears throat> That's a lot of people, isn't it? That was just the men. So if you count the women and the children, it was probably 15, 20,000 people that were gathered together, and he fed them from what? <clears throat> he went to Phil's barbecue and bought a lot of barbecue? No, he fed them from five loaves and two fish tacos. <laughs> That's all he had. Remember, five loaves. And what's amazing <clears throat> about that story is it says later that there were, I think it was 12 baskets of leftovers. Anybody here likes leftovers? I love leftovers. He was showing that he was the Messiah, the Savior, and he could do miracles, casting out demons and healing the blind and those that couldn't walk and all these other things. I mean, and now he's predicting his death. This is what is going to happen in a few short days. And uh, Jesus tells us in this story that he's on his way to Jerusalem. And he knew that he was going to be killed going to Jerusalem. The disciples weren't happy about this. You're doing what? You're going to Jerusalem and, you're, and you know that the Pharisees and the Sadducees have a contract out on you and they want to kill you. And so they're all confused. You know, and so here's these three different groups that came up to talk to Jesus. Three different men. We can learn a lot from Jesus' uh, reply to these three people. Um, right before this, there was a woman that the Pharisees said, "You, th this woman was a sinner. And she took a very costly jar of perfume. And what did she do? Dumped it on the head of Jesus, washed his feet with this perfume. And the disciples, or the Pharisees, the disciples, they all got upset and mad, you know, look what she's doing. Don't you know that she's a sinner and she's doing this? <clears throat> and Jesus said, it must be so because she's uh, anointing my head for my burial, for my death on a cross. And, uh, you know, a lot of us don't understand all the things that Jesus was to suffer. I mean, it was horrible, the things that happened to him, you know, when he was on the cross and going to the cross. How many hours was he hanging on the cross being crucified? Anybody know? Six hours. And he was 15 hours without food. And it says the reason he came and this was all going to happen was he's going to suffer for us. Tell the person next to you, Jesus suffered for you. They took him captive. They beat him. They tortured him. He carried about a 200-pound cross on his back. And a lot of people think, well, it was just a short distance. It was six football fields up a hill. And that's why he stumbled many times, and someone else had to come along and help him. 
Then he was also beat with a whip that had, uh, I think it was nine leather straps mixed with metal and glass. He was beat 39 times. Can you imagine what his back looked like? I mean, just ripped apart, bleeding, everything else that happened to him. You know, uh, they struck him with a, a whip, it says. He had a, they had a stick. They spat upon him. They, they covered his head. They shouted, if you're the son of God, tell us which one hit you. There was a Roman cohort of about 600 men that were all watching this. And then they slammed. We have a crown of thorns over here on the side. You can see how thick those, those uh, thorns are. They slammed those, that crown of thorns upon his head. So it really ripped up his head as they were putting those things on him. And uh, all these things. And then they took the wood and they first took his feet and they put this iron stake, slammed it through him into the wood. And then they lifted up the wood. There's probably about a three-inch ditch there. They put the, the wood in the dip in the ditch with Jesus. And then they took his hands and they pulled them like this. And it says they drove the nails through his hands. Now it's probably everybody have some of you have wristwatches, right? It was probably right about where the wrist, uh, wristwatch is that they put the iron stakes. And so now he's hanging on the cross for six hours. You know, and it says he could have called down legions of angels at any time. But he was there to die for our sins. You know, I, I mean, we should be realizing how much he suffered so that we could have eternal life in his name. That's how much he suffered. And uh, so he's going to say to these people, come and follow me. And, uh, you know, I hope today that we don't make excuses, that we don't, you know, well, you don't know my past. You don't know what happened in my past. You don't know how it's affected me. And, you know, everything that happened. But God says, forgetting what lies behind, we press on towards our goal, the goal of Jesus, every one of us. Don't let your past hold you back. You've been forgiven. You've been set free. You've been cleansed. So here's the first person. Luke chapter 9, verse 57. It says, And as they were going along the road, going to Jerusalem, someone said to him, Jesus, I will follow you wherever you go. Now, you've known people that are backsliding right now, right? You know people that have turned away from the Lord. And maybe when they first accepted the Lord, they say, Hey, I'll follow you wherever you go, Jesus. And then the cares of the world and riches and all these other things got in the way. Drugs, alcohol, their relationship with God. And they've fallen away. This guy says, I'll go with you wherever you go. And here's Jesus' words. Sometimes they're pretty harsh. He said to him, the foxes, verse 58, the foxes have holes and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Follow me. I'll follow you anywhere. But then there's a three-letter word, but. But. You know, Jesus says it's not going to be glamorous. It's not going to be easy. You could be persecuted for righteousness sake. Family members may turn on you because of your Christian stand. You know, maybe you lose a job because you stand up for Christ. You know, it's easy to be a fan. And uh, there were many fans of Jesus because he was, man, the crowds were coming to him. He was doing miracles. He was doing all kinds of things. It's easy to be a fan, but it's harder to be a true follower of Jesus. Yes, I'm going to come and follow Jesus no matter what the cost. I'm going to take up my cross daily and follow him. Anybody like the Padres? A few of you are raising your hands. They beat the hated Dodgers yesterday. So, 
They're doing something right. But the, the stands are, are – there's four games going on right now. The stands are just half Dodger fans and half Padre fans. So the, the Padres start yelling out, let's go Padres. And the Dodger fans are going, let's go Dodgers. <laughs> you know, and, and there's this tension that's going on in the fans. And, you know, the number of people that they've arrested for being drunk and, you know, crazy is just amazing. And, but I'm a fan. I, I love Sun Kun, whatever, Kim. Sun Hun. Yes, whatever. Kim. I love Kim. He is so good. I mean, he's got one of the best averages in the last, like, 20 games or something. He's amazing. And yet, but he's not the big-time Padre player. You know, you, you have uh, Tatis, you know, who is fun to watch. I mean, he's doing amazing in left field. And, and, you know, I, I, I hope that they win, but if they don't win, I'm not going to lose my salvation over it. Right. I'm not going to lose my joy over whether they win or lose, right? And uh, so God wants us to be followers. I'm a follower of Jesus. I want to be a true disciple of Jesus. And I'm not going to rest my hope on whether the Padres win or lose, you know. So this guy says, I'll follow you, Jesus, wherever you go and I'm thinking really you're going to follow him he was just a fan you know he thought Jesus was a winner a miracle worker all the things that he did and uh, he didn't say I'm all in you know I mean when this guy ended up leaving so life was God says that we're going to have trials we're going to have tribulation we're going to have persecution. We may have people that don't like us because we tell them that we're, we're Christians. There's going to be setbacks. There's going to be struggle, struggles. Jesus had no place to lay his head. That was the first person. He said the same thing to all three guys. Here's the second one. Chapter 9, verse 59. And he said to another, follow me. Follow me. Kevin, follow me. Jesus looking, not me, but Jesus. <laughs> He's looking right at this guy. Come and follow me. And then it says, Permit me first to go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, Allow the dead to bury their dead. But as for you, go and proclaim everywhere the kingdom of God. You know, um, Tell people about the free gift of salvation. Be a light, be a salt, be an example, bear fruit. And I don't know, it seems kind of a harsh answer, but there might have been a lot of things coming on uh, that we don't know about because Jesus knows the thoughts and the intentions of our heart, right? You know, and, and so let me go home and bury my father. It sounds legit, but if you were in, a, in the Eastern culture, it would be something they would have done the day after or, the, or within a couple days they would have buried their fathers or they're buried their, the person that died. In the Western culture, you know, we usually have a funeral service or a celebration of life two, three weeks after the person had died, right? To get all the affairs in order, you know, to make all the arrangements, and one of the expositors said, well, we don't know, but probably this guy isn't even dead yet. And because they haven't buried him, rapid fire, you know, so let me go back, you know, and, and I'm not ready to follow you, Jesus. I got to take care of these other things first. I got to get things worked out. And Jesus knew exactly where his heart was. We should be preaching life to people you know jesus said i am the way the truth and what life and nobody comes under the father except how through me he is the eternal life he is that water of life that doesn't run out he is our savior the messiah 
He brings hope. He's the God of hope, the God of peace, our Redeemer. And, and one time he says, the kingdom of God is with you. I'm right here with you. Put me first in your life above everything else. But what were the words that Jesus said to him? Come and do what? Follow me. That's the second time. Here's the third time. Verse 60, 61. And another also said, hey, I am a follower. I'm a true disciple. I'll follow you, Lord. But first, permit me to say goodbye to those that are at home. And Jesus said to him, no one after putting his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. You know, hey, you know, let me, we can all make excuses, can't we? It's too hot to go to church today. I've worked too hard this weekend. I'm tired. I'm worn out. You know, we can come up with all kinds of excuses. Hey, I can't read the Bible today. I've got to watch you know, something on TV. You know, the U.S. Olympic women's team is playing. So guess what time they played? 3 a.m. Oh, did they lose? Okay. But they played at 3 a.m. So some people say, hey, I had to watch the women's soccer game, and so I'm too tired to go to church. I'm sure there were people like that. You know, we come up with all kinds of reasons, excuses, and that's exactly what this guy was doing. The Lord says, today is the day the Lord has made, and I will what? Rejoice, Rejoice and be glad in it. You know, I hear people say, someday I'll give my life to Christ, but I'm not ready right now. I'm not ready to be a disciple. You know, hey, I'm not ready to quit the drugs and the alcohol and the pornography you know, maybe someday I'll do that, but I'm not going to do it today. I'm not ready to tithe, you know, not ready. Some people say, hey, you know, I'll, I'll serve God, but I'm not going to serve God today. Maybe when I'm older, I'll start serving God. And God says, today is what matters. Today is what matters. We in this room may not have tomorrow. Last week, there were three people that have cancer, and, you know, they're getting cancer treatments and radiation and all kinds of things, and they don't know how long they have to live. None of us do. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. You know, that's why Jesus said, hey, stop worrying and stressing about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Get your priorities right today. Be faithful. Be committed. Uh, Philippians chapter 1, here's a great verse. If you know where Philippians is, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, chapter 1. Verse 21. It says, for me to live is what? Christ and to die in the, is gain. If I am to live on the flesh, this means fruitful labor for me, Paul says. Hey, I'm available to be used by God, serve God. And, but death is good because I get to go home and be with Jesus forever, my eternal body. So he says, I am hard-pressed from both directions, verse 23. I have the desire to depart and be with Christ, and that's very much better. Yet... To remain on the flesh is more necessary for your sake. You know, he's saying, hey, he was like putting others first. And then he goes, I'm hard pressed from both directions. I don't know which is better. And then convinced of this in verse 25, he says, I know that I shall remain and continue with you all for your progress in the joy of the faith. You know, he wanted to serve others. We can all serve others. There's all kinds of opportunities to serve others. Some people are going to rest homes now. Some people are going to, um, in La Jolla, there's a, a veterans facility that they're going to. You know, I mean, 
People are reaching out to other people with food and clothing and all kinds of things. You know, there's, there's many ways to serve others. We can all do that. We have to listen to what Jesus says to us. What does Jesus want us to do? I mean, we gave you a Sunday school list. Those are opportunities to serve in the church and, and be a part of this kids group out here. I love it. You know, and I see those kids and they're so happy and they're so joyful because there's people willing to love on them during the services. That is so exciting. You know, so if God's calling you, fill out one of those uh, things that we handed out and get involved in the Sunday school. We'll train you and everything else. There's a lot of places that we can serve the Lord. A lot of opportunities. You know, Tony said, hey, let's do a men's Bible study. And I said, okay, great. You know, I'll take it to the committee. That's me. <laughs> so I said, do it. You know, Patty wanted to do a women's Bible study. Great. I'll take it to the committee. Took about two minutes. Yes, do it. You know, someone else wanted to do movie ministry and, and have a praise and worship night. Great, let's do it. You know, we want people to hear the good news. We want people to grow. Somebody said, hey, we need a food pantry. Great, let's do it. But I got to take it to the committee. Then we started doing it. We fed thousands of people. You fed thousands of people. You know, and people come in through the week and they can't believe that we give out food to them. There's exciting things that we can do for the Lord. In there will be opposition. Turn to 1 Samuel chapter 17. First Samuel, chapter 17. Here's a familiar story to you. Now, there's opportunities, but there also will be obstacles. We need to be in prayer. We need to be reading our Bibles. We need to get vision from God. First Samuel, chapter 17, verse 41. There was a champion of the Philistines. His name was Goliath. And uh, David, it says, in verse 40, he took a stick in his hand and chose for himself five smooth stones from the brook and put them in the shepherd's bag, which he had in his pouch, and the sling was in his hand. And he approached the Philistine, the champion of God's enemies, Goliath. And it says, he, and the Philistine came on and approached David with his shield bearer in front of him. And the Philistine looked at David and saw David. And he disdained him for he was just a youth. He was ruddy. He had a handsome appearance. And the Philistine said to David, verse 43, am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his little G, gods, all the gods that the Philistines worship. And it said, the Philistine also said to David, come to me and I'll give your flesh to the birds of the sky and <clears throat> the beasts of the field. And David, I love this, said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword and a spear and a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have taunted. This day the Lord will deliver you up into my hands. I will strike you down. I'll remove your head from you. I'll give the dead bodies of the army of the Philistines to the birds of the sky, the beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all that this assembly may know that the Lord does not deliver by the sword or by the spear. For the battle is whose? The Lord's. And he will give you into our hands. And then it happened when the Philistine rose and came near to meet David. That David ran quickly towards the battle line to meet the Philistine. 
And David put his hand into his bag and took one stone and slung it, and it struck the Philistine on his forehead, and the stone sank into his forehead, and he fell on his face to the ground. Thus David prevailed over this Philistine with a sling and a stone. He struck the Philistine and killed him, but there was no sword in David's hand. I mean, it's a great story. You know, Christianity has a lot of enemies. They don't like it. You know, when people are serving others and giving of themselves, and they represent Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. You know, I always wonder, why did he take five stones from the creek? Because Goliath had four sons. He was going to go get the other sons, too. I think. Some people think, well, if he missed with the first one, he still had four more. But Goliath was an enemy of the Lord. And we can do all things through Christ who what? Strengthens us. Deborah in Judges 5, Nehemiah in chapter 4, uh, 1 Chronicles 11, David's men, you know, not doing things for themselves, but doing things for the Lord courageously. The three words. <clears throat> Come, follow me. Come, follow me. And that's what Jesus says to all of us here in this room. I've heard a lot of excuses in 42 years. Hey, I can't follow you. I can't follow Jesus because of my past. <clears throat> All the things that I've done in my past hold me back from following Jesus. Well, I, what? Yeah, your past has been forgiven. It's been cleansed. Hey, I can't follow Jesus because I'm ashamed of a lot of different things in my life. You know, I'm ashamed. Another person says, well, you know, you have no idea what I've done. You know, I, I, God can't forgive these failures. I, you know, he can't forgive me. Yes, he can. How many times God says that he forgives us and we are to forgive one another? Seventy times seven. So God cleanses, God forgives, God heals people, he sets people free. You know, I always thought, man, if my mom knew all the things that I did, she would disown me. She, some things I've never told her, you know. Other people say, I can come to Jesus anytime, but not right now. You know, I've got all these things that I'm doing and you know, I got to do this and I got to do that. And Jesus says, no, now's the day of salvation. He's got some great things planned for your life. Some people say, I'm too young. You can't use me. Wait until I'm 40 or 50. Then he might use me. And other people say, I'm too old. I'm over 60 years old. God can't use me. Yeah, he can. I mean, he used it. Joshua and Caleb into their older years, you know, to use David in his younger years. You know, the disciples, some of them were very young. Pastor, there's things holding me back in my life. I can't, can't make that commitment. And so you're like one of those three people that Jesus spoke to. Today, make the commitment. Make him your priority in your life. He says, I came that you might have life and have it what? He's not a killjoy. But there are some things that he says don't get involved in because they'll hold you back. They'll ruin your life. So I want everybody here just to bow your heads. Think about those words. Think about Jesus speaking those words to you today. Come and follow me. Come and follow me. You don't have God's peace. You don't have his joy in your life today. You're not right with him. That's all right. 
There's other people in this room that are in the same position you are. But you got to make a decision. You're either for him or you're against him in your life. Come, follow me. Some people say, well, I'm not ready for commitment. I'm going to have to change some things in my life. You can do it with Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit. God, right now there's many people in this room that are wrestling, struggling in their lives. And they need your help, Lord. They need your touch today. They need your joy, your guidance. They need you to stand up in their lives today. <clears throat> that they would hear those words and they would say, yes, I will follow you, Lord. Wherever you want me to go, I'll follow you. Whatever you want me to do, I'll follow you. God, whatever <clears throat> things in my life that are holding me back, I'll give those to you today, Lord. Get rid of the drugs and the pornography and the alcohol and some of these other things holding me back. I give it all to you, Lord. Count the cost. Be courageous. Stand up for Jesus. Don't quit. Don't throw in the white towel. Speak to our hearts, Lord. Speak to our hearts right now, right where we're at. That we'd hear those words from you. Come, follow me. Maybe you're not sure if your name's written in God's book of life for eternity. Today's the day. Confess your sins. Ask forgiveness. Ask for healing in your life. Make Jesus your Lord and your Savior. Put him on the throne room of your life today. As our heads are bowed and those joining us online, if you know that you need a change in your life. You know you're not going down the straight and narrow path. You're going down that wide road that leads to destruction, the dead end street. You know that God's speaking to your heart today through these three guys, these three th representing three groups of people. And you need to be committed, not a fan. Be committed. Make the decision to follow Jesus. Though none go with me, I will follow. Though none go with me, I want Jesus to be Lord of my life. As there is about, if that's your prayer this morning, just raise your hand right now and say, Pastor, that's me. I need help from Jesus today. I need him to take control of my life. There's many people in this room. Anybody else, you hear those words, come, follow Jesus. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Come, follow Jesus today. We thank you, Lord. We love you today. God, thank you for these wonderful people. What a privilege it is to have another day to honor you, to serve you. God, we may not have tomorrow. Today's the day. Do what you can today. Live for Christ today. He'll give you enough grace to get through today. I know some are really struggling. Some are really having hard times. Jesus told us ahead of time, in the world you will have tribulation. You'll have trials. You'll have things going on in your lives. But be of good cheer. He says, I have overcome the Lord. And I'm preparing a mansion for you in heaven. Peace give I to you. Joy give I to you. That you might have the abundant life as you put Christ first. Thank you for every person here, Lord, young and old. May we um, be good servants of the Lord Most High. Good servants every day. Thank you for every person here today. Bring them back, Lord, as we get into your word and hear more of your messages and how they apply to our lives. May we be ex as excited and more excited and more enthusiastic than when the Padres win. Because you have won on the cross for eternity. 
God, may we be excited about you and your word and prayer. And we ask this in Jesus' name. And everyone said? Amen. Amen. Let's all stand. Feel free to help yourselves uh, if you have a need from the food pantry or if you know a neighbor or a friend that has a need. There was a lady that came last night that um, is living in her car, and she said, I have no food. And uh, we said, hey, take as much as you like. We would be blessed to have you. And then she said, I can't find a sleeping bag anywhere. I said, you know what? Give me your number. And by Tuesday, I'll have a sleeping bag for you and some blankets. And I'll give you a couple numbers that you can call. And she had this big smile on her face. And I just told her, I said, Jesus loves you. And uh, she made some bad decisions in her life. She got herself in a lot of messes. But I said, you can turn your life over to Christ and if you're walking with him and living for him and serving him, you know, your life will start to change. And she was so happy when she walked out those doors last night. And I said, the body of Christ here loves you. And we'll do what you can to help you. And uh, a couple other people drove by, and they, uh, let, they told us that they just decided to stop and see what was going on here in the Saturday night service. And they couldn't believe that we had a church service on Saturday nights. And they were so blessed that they could find a place, because they work on Sundays, that they could come to church on Saturday nights. And look around right now. You know, the, the place last night was even more full than it is right now. It's amazing. You know, God's doing some neat things. And so become a disciple. Become part of the body of Christ. Amen? You have the uh, calendar for the month of August. Get involved. Come back and see us. And uh, let's sing our closing song. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, your perfect love is casting out fear. And even when I'm caught in the middle of the storms of this life, I won't turn back, I know you are near, and I will fear no evil, for my God is with me, and if my God is with me, whom then shall I fear, whom then shall I fear? storm oh no never let go every high and every low no you never let go lord you never let go of me amen he's not gonna let go because i can see a light that is coming for the heart that holds on there'll be an end to these troubles, but until that day comes, still I will praise you, still I will praise you. As I can see a light that is coming for the heart that holds on, there'll be an end to these troubles, but until that day comes. Still I will praise you, still I will praise you. As you keep on loving and you never let go, oh no, you never let go. Through the calm and through the storm, oh no, you never let go. And every high and every low, oh no, you never let go. Never let go of me. Singing, oh no, you never let go through the calm and through the storm. Oh no, never let go in every 
never let go alone. You never let go of me. Amen. Isn't that a great promise? I will never leave you, and I will what? Remember that. He's never going to leave you. He's never going to forsake you. And, uh, you know, we have refreshments for you outside, and the food pantry's over there. Grab a bag and, you know, take what you need or your neighbors need, and give it in the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. God bless you. Have a great day.